Hello Jet Setters, I'm Jeb Brooks from GreenerGrass.com and this is Hawaiian Airlines. Few destinations beat the beauty of Hawaii, but getting there requires following a labyrinth of rules. In this video, I'll highlight what you need to know in order to travel to Hawaii, share the unmatched Hawaiian Airlines first class service between Los Angeles and Maui, and rate the whole experience with a Jeb score. Do your research before booking a flight to Hawaii. The rules differ among islands and are subject to change at any time. But as of the production of this video, flying to most islands in Hawaii requires passengers either to quarantine upon arrival or upload a negative test result to the state of Hawaii, which is what we did. If you want to avoid a 10-day quarantine, the state has a number of trusted testing partners you'll have to choose from. We took our tests in front of a nurse via Zoom. We then shipped our samples to a lab and waited for the results. They didn't come until about 20 minutes before check-in for our flight closed. We nearly didn't make it. It can definitely be a pain to keep up with these shifting rules and the stress of timing your tests and getting the results back before you depart. But these restrictions are completely reasonable, totally understandable, and absolutely necessary. When we arrived in Maui, we presented our IDs along with proof of our negative tests via a QR code. It was all matched up to a state database, and we were allowed in. It was really pretty straightforward. Again, these rules are subject to change and even differ among islands. But enough about that. Let's join the Nene in the skies over to Hawaii. It took us nearly six hours to make the 2,500-mile journey at 36,000 feet from Los Angeles to the beautiful island of Maui. We traveled on board this stunning Hawaiian Airlines A321neo. Now, I really had no plans to make this video, so there's nothing much to share from the ground at LAX. That said, the cabin was really spectacular, and we were fortunate to be seated in seats 4A and 4B in the first class cabin. It was as we began our takeoff roll when I realized that there was no way I couldn't capture this journey and share it with you. So here's a bonus trip report from last year. As we left LAX behind, we engaged in a long and winding departure. We headed north and then east for a while before finally heading back out over the Pacific Ocean, flying southwest toward Maui. But it would be a while. If you like travel and aviation, be sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell for even more videos like this one. Meanwhile, inside the cabin, the airline distributes iPads to first class passengers. More on those in just a bit. A beverage service with actual glasses was provided, a festive Mai Tai for me, and my fiance opted for some sparkling wine. The seats are well designed for a daytime flight. But on a red eye, it's not nearly as good as Hawaiian's incredible A330 fully lie flat seat. We had the opportunity to try those seats once before, in business class, from Boston to Honolulu. That's the longest scheduled non-stop domestic US flight. I'll link to that full video below. Not only are those seats beautiful, but they're eminently practical. They're fully flat, and it's possible to get into and out of the window seat without disturbing your seatmate, even if they're in the fully flat position. Back on the A321, flight attendants had placed water bottles in the seats for us before boarding. These first class seats are 21 inches wide and offer 39 inches of pitch. There's even a footrest. There's also a large storage cubby between the seats, and it even has an international plug. There's also USB power. The tray table is large and includes a stand for your tablet. The seat back offers plenty of storage along with a pocket located below. The A321 includes three cabins. There are 16 seats like mine in first class. Premium Economy has 44 seats with 35 inches of pitch, and there are 129 main cabin seats with 30 inches of pitch. Both Premium Economy and main cabin seats measure in at 17.3 inches wide. We continued our odd eastbound routing to Hawaii. The paper menu foretold what would be another excellent breakfast from Hawaiian Airlines. 
as we'd come to expect, the food was remarkable. I'd go so far as to say Hawaiian has the best catering among all the U.S. airlines. At a time when a lot of them are providing next to nothing in terms of meals, Hawaiian provides a veritable smorgasbord to its passengers. In fact, economy passengers even get a hot sandwich for free. And finally, after breakfast, we left the California coast behind. Any idea why we had such a bizarre route? Leave a comment and let me know below. I did save dessert. By the way, if having dessert at breakfast is not a benefit of being an adult, I don't know what is. Hawaiian's A321neo comes with some pretty epic lighting features. The seats have individual air vents and reading lights. The iPads provided by Hawaiian Airlines offer limited choices for content. The headphones just weren't nearly as good as my favorites, the Bose QC20s. If you're traveling in economy class or prefer a generally better entertainment experience, bring your own tablet, but be sure to download the Hawaiian app first. It offers an in-flight map, along with a lot more choices to watch. Oh, and even more reason to bring your own? Flight attendants collect the provided iPads and headphones a full 40 minutes before landing. Now, everyone kept their shades drawn for most of the flight. As an aviation enthusiast, that was tough. But I was able to crack the window just a little tiny bit without bothering anybody to get a glimpse of the clouds below. I rate my international first and business class flights using an admittedly subjective scale I jokingly call the Jeb score. And even though this wasn't an international flight, it's going to be a while before we can travel outside the US. So here goes. Let's look at the lounge, the seat, the in-flight entertainment, the food, and the service. First, Hawaiian doesn't offer lounge at access at LAX, so there's no score here. The seat is remarkably well designed for what it is. It was great on a daytime flight, but if you find yourself on a red eye, be sure to look for a route served by a Hawaiian A330. Those lie flat beds are vastly better for sleeping. Also, yeah, this is why the Jeb score is subjective. I'm comparing US domestic first class seats against fully flat seats on international carriers. But whatever, this seat earns four stars for what it is. The in-flight entertainment is fantastic via the Hawaiian app on your own device, but the one they provide is pretty weak. I'll rate the IFE on my own device five stars. The food is out of this world, the best in the US. You'd be lucky to get a cold sandwich from other carriers on a route like this. Hawaiian, though, has largely maintained its top-notch catering, this despite the tough times they're facing. Again, economy passengers even get a hot sandwich for free, five stars all day long. Finally, the crew were friendly, proactive, and on the ball. They earned five stars. That leaves Hawaiian with 19 out of a possible 25. And yes, some of you will say it's not fair to include the lounge score because they don't have one. But if you choose between, say, Alaska and Hawaiian for this trip, Alaska starts its first class experience on the ground with a lounge. All that said, I was incredibly grateful for the chance to travel to Hawaii in a notably safe and comfortable way. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.